Hi guys, this is Dr. Bailey. I'm a board certified orthodontist as well as the co-founder of Trainminder. Today I'm going to talk to you about refinements. I get a lot of questions from users about what refinements are, how they can avoid it, and how they can finish with better results. So let's dive right in. A little background on refinements. Your teeth move in clear aligner therapy according to a predicted plan. But as in real life, sometimes the actual results are not the same as the predicted results. And when your teeth need to move a little bit more in order to get to that final ideal position, your orthodontist will order more aligners in order to achieve that result. So in my clinical practice, there are always the top five or six things that will necessitate the use of ordering additional aligners. The first thing that I see is the infamous lateral incisor. Lateral incisors are the second teeth in line from the front. They are small, they're flat, they lack anatomy, and as a result, it's really difficult for clear aligners to grip those little suckers and move them into place. I always tell my patients it's akin to trying to grip a wet watermelon seed with your fingers. It, it, it's very difficult. So for my patients, if we need a lot of movement on those laterals, I will put a large attachment on those so that we can increase the chances of the aligners gripping those lateral incisors and moving them into position. Also, Lateral incisors, they don't, if you need to extrude them, which means that you want to pull them down, you can't do pure extrusion. What that means is that they need to have some other movement coupled with them. So I'll usually ask my technician to couple um, retraction with extrusion. You have to have some coupling of forces in order to extrude them. Otherwise, if... Um, if they don't extrude accordingly, then I'll do need to do a refinement or I would add what's called a bootstrap with elastics on them to help to get them into place. And so that's number one, lather incisors. Number two, those are rotations. Certain teeth start off with a lot of rotations and I will purposely overcorrect those rotations in order to maximize the chances that they will actually end up where I want them to end up. And what, what does that mean? It just basically means that um, what you see clinically, what you see in your mouth is actually about three aligners behind the predicted stage that you're on. It's just that your teeth aren't rotated to the degree to the degree that they are rotated on your clinical check on the digital version. And it's just due to uh, some uh, space, I guess, between your teeth and your aligners. So it's not going to be exactly, your teeth won't be exactly where the predicted results are. So as a result of that, I will purposely overcorrect any of any rotations so that at the end your teeth will be where they should be, even though they are overcorrected on the digital plan. Does that make sense? Of course, in patients with very severe rotations, I might um, I might put them in braces for a few months to get most of the rotations out first, and then switch them to clear aligners. Um, that that doesn't happen very often, but I employ the use of braces to derotate certain teeth because otherwise you'll get a clin check plan or an aligner plan where you have 75 80 aligners and that's just a lot of aligners even for the first round so I do do that sometimes or if there's uh, some teeth in the back that need a little more oomph I might do some partial braces way in the back where nobody sees them anyway and then switch to clear aligners. So those are some things that I do. Um, another common reason for refinements is post posterior open bite. Posterior open bite just means that your teeth, when you take your aligners out, they're not touching in the back. Um, and some posterior open bite is normal. 
In fact, that's a quite a common finding with clear aligner therapy. And that's because when you wear your clear aligners, especially if you clench or grind your teeth during the day or at night, you're intruding your back teeth. That means that you are putting pressure on your back teeth and moving them away from each other so that when you take your clear aligners out there's a little space there so it's not uncommon to see about a half millimeter of posterior open bite in my teen cases my young adults if they have half a millimeter of open bite and they don't have any other correction needed they i i usually don't recommend a refinement all i do is i have them move to about 15 hours of wear time uh, a day and let the teeth to naturally settle on their own and usually about four to four to eight weeks later their teeth are touching and then they're done however if the posterior open bite is more than a millimeter a millimeter or more and there are certain other rotations other corrections that are needed then i would definitely re uh, recommend a refinement in order to address those things another reason why you may have posterior open bite is that there's inadequate torque on the upper incisors it just means that your top incisors they're not tipped out enough they're too upright and when that happens that you know causes anterior interferences so the next thing is residual spaces uh sometimes you know there are some small spaces that end up on on your teeth that i need to tighten up i will usually order over correction aligners they're called c chain aligners and what they do is they close up the space without needing me to order more aligners so i always do that for all of my cases and that's a cheat way of reducing the need for refinements um Another one is reason why we might need uh, refinement trays is that the bite is not fully corrected. So if you're wearing elastics with your aligners, make sure that you wear them 22 hours a day. If your teeth are straight, but your bite isn't fully corrected, then that would mean that I would have to order more aligners for you to wear just so that you can wear your elastics with them to fully correct your bite. And then we have deep bite. Deep bites are when the top and bottom teeth, they overlap each other too much in the horizontal direction. Deep bites are difficult to, to correct in clear aligner cases. Um, and so uh, if, if the patient's bite is still a little bit too deep, then I need to order some refinement aligners in order to fully correct the deep bite. Again, I employ the use of overcorrection in order to address deep bite. So if a patient comes to me with a deep bite, in their predicted results, I'll open their bite up to zero over zero percent overbite or even a slight open bite, knowing that they won't be fully corrected to that degree. Uh, and then finally, uh, certain teeth are too high; they haven't moved down enough, they haven't extruded enough. Common one, as I had mentioned earlier is the lateral incisor another one would be those canines upper canines it's not uncommon for patients to see me and they have those kind of vampirish high canines and basically they don't come down far enough and the main reason usually is because there's inadequate space we haven't made enough big enough of a space for them to fully come in because canines are the fattest sort of in that middle third of the crown and so to avoid uh, refinements i usually will have to ask for more space than what i think the tooth is actually needing in order for that tooth to to be able to extrude or come in fully so those are the main reasons for needing refinements and now i'll review some tips on how you can try to do your part to reduce the need for refinements number one wear your aligners 22 hours a day wear your rubber bands 22 hours a day if you need them number two 
do your chewing exercises, your chewies or your mints or whatever it is. I have a video on chewing exercises. Basically what it does by doing chewing exercises is that you help to lock your trays in to your teeth so that they can get a better grip on your teeth so that your teeth can move better, okay? The third one is to look for areas in which your teeth are too tight. They're touching too closely to each other. The best way to do that is by flossing every day. Not only are you re are you removing plaque and food, but you're also checking all of your contacts between your teeth. And if there are any areas that are touching very tightly and you have crowding in that area, that's usually a recipe for a disaster. So be sure to mention that to your orthodontist. For my patients, we check contacts at every visit and in areas where teeth aren't tracking there's a lot of rotation and there are tight contacts I will use a lightning strip and do a little bit of what's called hand IPR I'll, I'll polish a little bit between the teeth to relieve those frictional areas that can interfere with teeth gliding past each other and then of course the final tip is to not mindlessly move into a new aligner just because the time is up. A lot of patients will just switch to a new aligner when it's seven days or 10 days, 14 days. Actually, you know, get into the habit of wear, of wearing your trays and getting in front of a mirror and examining every single tooth. Look for those halos or non-tracking areas. I'll do a little video on how to tell if your teeth are tracking or not. But basically, you want to look for a gap or a space or halo between where your where your tooth ends and where the aligner is. If you see a gap there, it means that your teeth aren't tracking properly. They're not moving accordingly. So if that's the case, be sure to wear your aligners more, maybe for a couple more days, doing your chewing exercises and when necessary, you know, pointing that out to your orthodontist. Well, I hope that these tips have been helpful for you. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Trayminder channel. I love reading your comments. And uh, if you send me more feedback, I'll be sure to do more of these videos for you. This is Dr. Bailey. I'll see you next time. Bye.